What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, a.k.a. The Whip Show. And it is Royal Rumble weekend. Like, seriously, Royal Rumble is here tomorrow. Like, not today, but tomorrow. And are you ready for the Royal Rumble? I know I am, because that's like my favorite pay-per-view of all the PLEs, well, next to WrestleMania. So we had to come in with a special edition. And right now, I got my guy. The wordsmith, the author, the most published man in the world, the word heavyweight champion. Arguable. Mr. <laughs> Joe Walker. What's going on, family? Most published in the world. I don't know. That Guinness record has not been proven yet. <laughs> there was some there was some thought that I may have broken like five years ago. But that's here, neither here nor there. Okay. <laughs> Shout out neither to here him. Nor there. Neither What's... here nor there. For okay. sure, man. I'm ready to yeah. rumble. I'm ready to rumble. You, oh, you look kid. ready. You look ready. And yo, now we got, now see, we had to do something real special. This man is right there in Tampa, Florida right now. Ready for the I'm rumble. right here, baby. Let's go. He's representing. Hey, what's up, everybody? He's representing NXT with Najee on the Whip Show podcast show, but he's also been down there doing media for us. He got some dope interviews, man. Shout out to the boy, Najee, man. What's going on, Brody? Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm reporting live from St. Pete Beach right now. I'm in some crappy motel, but you know what? It's worth it, baby. It's been a <laughs> heck of a day. <laughs> I had to hit the road at 5 o'clock this morning. There's some change in order to get here from where I live at in Florida. But I am here. I am present. I went through three hours of a media scrum. And let me tell you, bro, for that being my first experience, I cloud nine. I saw that. That's all I got. Man. This is incredible. Now, I'm glad you brought the media scrum up because we're going to talk about the Royal Rumble, some of the big matches and everything. But I want to talk about this first. How was that media scrum? It was your first one. Um, Who was there? What happened? So it was it was pretty crazy. Like uh, it was a it was a smaller room than I anticipated, but I was blessed enough to talk to Nia Jax, Shayna Blazler. Um, I talked to Julius Creed. Didn't get a chance to talk to Brutus, unfortunately. He was kind of all over the place all day. I got to shake hands with Gunther, but I didn't get a chance to actually talk to him, which is kind of rough. Uh, him being the only champion there, he was being dragged around all over the place. Every time he was about two people away from me, somebody would be like, "Oh, I'll bring him right back." Um, Kofi was also there. I didn't get a chance to interview him, but I did get a chance to kind of say what's up to him in the hallway, dab him up a little bit. He gave me a selfie as well. Um, I talked to Ivy Nile. I got to talk to, I'm trying to think of some other, Chad and Otis. I got both the Alpha Academy in the same shot at the same time. And let me tell you, that touched my heart. Um, I got to Zawa as well. I also got to talk to Magazine Dupree. Um, there's a lot of names there, a lot of a lot of energy. I got to meet some of your friends as well. Kevin said what's up. Um, but other than that, it was absolutely incredible. It was something that I would have never dreamt that I would have been present for. And Naya was my first interview. And Naya told me I did a fantastic job. So after that, my confidence was through the roof, man. But I can't thank y'all enough for even putting me in that position to do that, man. That was that was incredible, bro. Like, thank you. <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. That's what it's all about. I'm glad you got to enjoy it, man. Oh, I got to do a quick shout out, man. Right. When this whole thing started, when this whole thing started, this Wrestling Heroes and Inside the Podcast, I had another co-host. He's checking in right now. My audio cut out, man. Daryl My audio pa- Devastating Dan? Devastating Daryl Pace checking in. I haven't talked to that man in a minute, man. And he already got some questions for us. And we're going to answer it. Um, Devastating Daryl. Matter of fact, Joe, I'm going to let you answer this. His question is, is there concern of a major sponsor backlash if this McMahon does not step down permanently. I didn't want to go there, but since it's already on the table, we got to talk about it, man. Because I don't know if you heard, Slim Jim already ale- allegedly have pulled sponsorship from the Royal Rumble tomorrow. What do you think about that? Um, It's, it's bothersome for a, a number of reasons. Do I think sponsors will pull? Um, yeah, because it's you know, human nature is to respond when you've been offended. And um, not that TKO had anything to do with this, 
but it's unfortunate because it's part of the union. Yeah. And that union with WWE is part of Vince McMahon. So anything that anyone that's birthed this organization has been a pillar in this organization. He is its creator. Um, rest in peace to his father, who he bought it from. But I'm sure that's not what he had. I can only assume. So um, it, it, it is hurtful that this is going to happen. It's going to be organizations who are probably interested in working with WWE and have been for years up to this point and maybe miss some negotiations on the table you never know who are now questioning whether they want to do it or not because of this circumstance it's really unfortunate that the proprietor of this global organization that has impacted all of our lives could perform so selfish so selfishly in his private life but also in his business life bringing those two together in such a selfish manner in such a horrific manner that it could just, it could cause irreparable damage um, that other people will be left to clean up. Yep. It's so unfortunate. And the thing about it too, man, we really just had that huge announcement by The Rock the other day, um, mm -hmm. getting signed to the board of directors. And, you know, I don't know if you saw him on any of those shows. He was on Fox. He was on ESPN. He did the whole media circuit. And one yeah. thing he was saying was that this was a game changer for wrestlers and just him and his family. And to see us go, and I mean, I have TKO stock. And that day it went up 18.75%. Not to go into a whole number thing, but it was crazy. I mean, we thought this was going to take WWE into a whole nother realm. But then two days later, this visit man scandal popped back up. It's unfortunate um, prayers to anybody involved in the situation, man. Obviously, we weren't there. And I will say, because when you do media, you got to say this word. Joe, you know what I'm about to say. Allegedly. Because Allegedly. Not, we don't know. We don't know. We don't have any um, concrete evidence other than what we've seen. But again, we don't know. But regardless, I hope this gets sorted out, man. And I hope this doesn't destroy um, WWE. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't even imagine. Maybe they knew what was coming down the pipe. Maybe Rock knew. Triple H, maybe those guys already knew. But if they didn't, imagine being rock. You just, you know, change the game for yourself. Not just you, your daughter, uh, the rest of your whole family, your whole generation. And after that, and then this comes up. Well, like you would that. have to, again, we can only make assumptions that there was conversations going on about the possibility of this. So I'm sure it, it didn't hit them blind. Out of respect for what this business is globally, I'm sure it, it sure didn't hit them blind. And someone brought them up to speed, let them, you know, put them in the know that this was coming. So they would have time to, as a team and as a board of directors and as a company to prepare for this. Are we ready to face this? Are we going to face this head on? How are we going to handle it? And so on and so on. And I think they have the minds in place from the board of directors all the way down to who's cleaning up the venues to prepare to deal with this and it's just unfortunate that they even have to and that they would be put in this position by someone who have who they have high esteem for because of what was created this mm -hmm. platform that they've all benefited from and will continue to benefit from and like the rock is it's generational it's been a generational benefit and and but now you 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 you're fighting to clean its reputation and yeah. keep its reputation clean. That's and, a tough and, Yeah, Totally agree, man. Now, with that being said, this is Royal Rumble weekend. This is it one is. of the biggest events that uh we've ever had. You know? Yep. If you're WWE, you're Triple mm -hmm. H, what do you do? How do you navigate around this? Do you, obviously, going to try to ignore it. He's going to have to say something about it in those media scrums and things like that. Yeah. But how do you get around that? What do you just bring us some big surprises at the event to try to take our mind off of it? You 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 don't you don't you don't go around. You you face it head on. And Triple H is a professional. We can tell by his growth in that position over the last several years. Um, he he's at another level as a public figure. Mm -hmm. He has surpassed that of a professional wrestler, a public speaker. A, a, a business person, a, a, an advisor. He's got so many different 
qualities now beyond just being a professional wrestler. So in a media setting like that, he's going to be prepared for those questions to come and he's going to know what and what not to say respectfully. Yeah. Now, as far as the product, professional wrestling is escapism, just like mm-hmm. an action movie or anime or sports lions. Okay. <laughs> so this gives them behind the scenes and the thousands of people in attendance and everyone watching at home, the millions, an opportunity to be away from this and not even think about it for three hours. Yep. I don't even think about it at all. And for them to go out there with this monkey so far away from their back to put on the type of show that people paid the money to see. Agreed. Agreed. Agreed, man. Well, those are some great answers, man. And like, let's go ahead and get to talking about that show itself. So we're going to say, well, now I was there. That's enough about that. Let's talk and about I want to go start. I want to start off right here, man. We're going to talk about the actual Royal Rumble match. But I want to start off on something I saw that they did the other day, and I really liked it. Um, it's that Logan Paul, Kevin mm-hmm. Owens, United States Championship match. But I don't know if you saw on social media, and this was an amazing use of social media, they did a segment, a little short or whatever, but they were at the Performance Center. Logan Paul was in there working out, getting you know, getting ready for the match. It showed Kevin Owens coming in like he was going to work out too. Logan Paul started yelling at him like, yeah, you better walk away. Kevin said, man, I'm just trying to work out. I'll deal with you at the Royal Rumble. Logan Paul throws something at him. Kevin Owens rushes to the ring. They start fighting. I just thought that was a perfect use of social media. You know, a lot yeah. of times we watch these promotions. All they do is, I'm going to kill you on Saturday night. And that's it. You know what I mean? Or those, a reel, which is a clip, a clip of just what happened at the mm-hmm. show. We know how many people consume social media now, and especially yep. in those reels format and those clips and those shorts and the TikTok and all that. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was an amazing use, man. And I think that just made me even more geeked up for that match. I cannot wait for it. What you thinking about that one, man? Man, it's a it's another one of those, it's another one of those circumstances where you just gotta you just gotta show love to the, the creative staff, man. And the fact that People think that WWE is so self-consumed and they only worry about their product. Man, WWE is pulling ideas and inspiration from everybody. You think about some of the stuff they do with Nope. Think about some of the stuff they do with New Japan. Think about some of the stuff they do in, and I'm glad to say it, TNA. With those type of segments. Yeah, it's nice to see them do that because on, per, from a production values point of view, who can do it bigger than WWE can? Not, not and they have the facilities to do it. Like that's a perfect place, like at the performance center, to set up something like that and carry it out. It just it 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 it, 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 may, it takes the realism to a whole nother level. Exactly. It takes the realism to a whole nother level. But you go back through time, you know, like early TNA. Remember them the parking lot and backstage stuff they do the the. Off-site stuff they would do, dude. That stuff is that stuff is dope. And now that you got the socials to do, come on, man, why not? Yeah, why not? I agree. I agree. Um, it's just amazing, man. I, I I like it. Look, I can see them shoulders, them shoulders jerking already. You getting geeked up, man? Are are you right. number thirty? Are you number thirty? Man, the Royal Rumble is my favorite pay per view. <laughs> Premium live event. Okay, it's, okay. Well, you got to be very careful. It's my favorite, man. It's been my favorite since nineteen ninety two. I get it. My same here, man. Same here, man. But with that being said, you didn't get your prediction. Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, who comes out with the United States title? He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Because we know Logan Paul takes it to a whole nother world with his social media following and all that. But we also know one thing about wrestling fans we will shun somebody if they become stars outside of the wrestling world. We always been like that. We do not care about them making movies and all that stuff, unless it's a wrestling film. So, with that being said, how do you how do you book that match tonight, that tomorrow, man? Um, that's a tough one because it's it's easy to make a case for Kevin Owens to take that title and do something else with it, take him in the WrestleMania with that title and put him up against. 
I mean, we can just throw all kind of names and scenarios that would just be sweet right now because there's so many, there's so many performers that are just at peak level right now that you could put together a classic. But I gotta say, I gotta say Logan Paul walks away with the title. What better way to solidify this title run than to have him win, you know, a, a title defense over a former universal champion? I agree. I'm going on that and, route too. I mean, one of the greatest of all time. I mean, if you want to just go over Kevin Owens' WWE career alone, look at what he was able to do in NXT. Look what he was able to do as NXT champion. Look what he was able to do as Universal champion until he ran Goldberg. That's a whole nother subject for a whole nother time. But he's had an incredible career. You go outside of WWE. I mean, he was a legend before he got there. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. This is a prolific performer in professional wrestling globally fight, Steve, has been fight. for a long time so to give logan paul a victory over him would just help solidify what he is as a professional wrestler and also come on let's be real make people hate him even more very true very true i'm going i'm going the same route i think you gotta have logan paul go up in this one i just think it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a match though it's definitely gonna be that but oh, i yeah. definitely think logan paul's gonna go up man now yeah, he in there with a dog this is where, like I said, I want to talk about some of the main matches, man. And okay. this is where it gets crazy. Mm -hmm. I know you've seen a report about what Sports Illustrated said. Well, let me let me let me go back. Let me go back because I saw your face right there. But let me go back. First and foremost, we know Seth Rollins is injured. We don't even know if Seth will even make it to WrestleMania. They did mm -hmm. not pull the title off of him though. They mm -hmm. let him hold, held on to the title. But I have to report it. Sports Illustrated reported that. The main matches for WrestleMania, if I'm not mistaken, were Roman versus The Rock, mm -hmm. Seth versus Gunther, mm -hmm. and I, what was the other match? I, I think it was Cody versus uh, uh, CM, Punk. CM Punk, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, I know when you first heard that, you mm -hmm. were offended. I don't think you were offended by the matches itself, but by wrestling media, wrestling journalism, journalists, mm -hmm. quote, quote, and how they feel to just putting information out there. Now, what did you think about that when you first saw that? Um, first of all, if that is, if that does wind up being the card, if that is the thing, I've always had an issue with people spoiling stuff. Yeah. Like, why, if you, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just let this play out and let people find out what can? Like, just, like, why? You know, that's like, you know, telling, giving somebody the password to your your, your garage, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the password to your safety deposit box that your grandparents left for you that you ain't never been inside of yet. And they're like, I'm going to give you the password to get in it. And you got this, this, and this in there. Like, that's facts, man. Like, why would you tell me that? Why won't you just let me go and, you know what I mean? That's I why just, so I've many never, people I've hate never Dave Meltzer. That. I've never liked that. Yeah. But. Um, if those turn out to be the matches, is that a bad card? No. Right. It's not. It's not. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. Gunther and Seth would be great. The Rock and Roman, you know, that's a, a dream match that people have been salivating over for a decade. But Cody and CM Punk? That's the one. Ooh, that's Ooh. the one. I don't care where you put that on the card. That's the one. That's that's the that's that sleeper. That's the one that's gonna be the match of the night. You calling it right now? If, if that's the what they go with. That's that's the one. So how did, I like the interaction they had this past Monday. It felt oh, yeah. real. It felt people keep, real. And they they still talking about it. Still talking about it. They were talking about on busted up a radio that. It, well, Bully Ray, it wasn't a whole lot of uh, one-hitter quitters. There was just mm -hmm. two strong points. But I think sometimes in a conversation with two men, it ain't always about trying to crack jokes and who got the best this. It's about, mm -hmm. dog, this is how I feel about you. That's what it is, flat out. And I felt like that's what we got with that promo this past Monday, man. Listen, man, you're talking about one of the greatest of all time, and Cody is on his way to being that also. He's progressively becoming where you supersede being arrested, where you get to that Undertaker level, that Hulk Hogan level, 
that Bret Hart level. Like he is headed in that direction. And to put him across from CM Punk, two people who have real personal history. And you have Punk drop a line like, I'm more American dream than you are. That's like, ooh. Yeah. And then Cody come back with the context. Okay, well, you you gave us the formula. You you had the torch and you dropped it. I picked it up. And I went and started AEW. I went through the indies and held all kind of titles. I booked, I was packing venues that people couldn't get more than a couple people to come in. And then I come back to WWE. I walked I walked them the footsteps that you left in the sand. Dude, I'm more punk than you are. You know, like that was yeah, that's yeah. real. Real. I agree. I agree. That's real. Now you take that tension and put it in a match with two dudes that could go. Come on, man. For sure. For sure. And feel free, y'all put that in the comments. What y'all think is going to be the match of the night. When we get the rest of me, but we're staying right here at Royal Rumble right now. Well, but also, guys, don't forget, don't forget, make sure you check us out, share this video, tag your friends. You can watch it on YouTube, Facebook Live. <clears throat> It'll be on my TV. It'll tag also it. be on 106.1 FM Toledo's radio station. So you got all types of ways to check us out. Audio and video, itself. we got you covered. All right, on all podcast platforms as well. But with the that show is said, all inclusive. All inclusive, you dig? But with that being said, that fatal four way, you got Roman Reigns, you got LA Knight, yeah, you got who else you got in the match? You got AJ Styles Styles. and Randy Orton. This is Randy Orton's big PLE return. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm playing devil's advocate. We know a lot of people are talking about Roman passing Hogan, and this Mm -hmm. was the 40 year uh, uh, anniversary of Hawker Mania, Mm -hmm. but. If Roman loses, he doesn't have to get mm-hmm. pinned in this match. So that can mm-hmm. give him a whole other story. Mm-hmm. With that being said, do you see Roman coming out with the title? I do. But if he doesn't come out with the title, I don't think it'll be Orton or AJ to take it. I think it'll be LA Knight. Because he's the only guy in that, in that, in that match that doesn't have a WWE title reign in his history. It's fastest rising star and one of the fastest rising stars in the company's history. Uh, top merch seller. He's been a top merch seller. He's got a lot of good things going for him. And then you pull him, you take him out of that, out of that, he comes out of that match with the title. He's the one that breaks Roman's streak in this match after the match he had with, with Roman and Crown Jew. Like you take all those things into account, right? So now here we go on in the, in the WrestleMania. So what's the WWE title match? I mean, they already been planting the seeds. Is him and Orton. They have already been planting the seeds. They started planting them seeds right away. Who was the first person to come out and interrupt uh, Orton when he came back? L. A. Night. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Very true. And I'm going to tell you. they can set up a match like, dude. I mean, for LA Knight to walk into WrestleMania as WWE champion, as the undisputed WWE Universal champion, that would be monumental. And the pop he would get coming out as champion would be epic. But Mm -hmm. then what you creating, we getting Rock Hogan. If 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 this shake out, if it if it was to shake out like this, imagine we could get that Rock. Hogan experience three times in this three times, potentially four times. Let's say they did Cody Punk. Epic. Crowd is going to be so split. They do Roman Rock. Epic. Crowd is going to be split. It's going to be hot. They do, just in case it happens, a possibility, they do Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Crowd is going to be hot. Split. And they do Orton and LA Knight. Come on, dude. Yeah. That's, Ooh, that's money it, right there. You know, pandemonium. And then, I mean, and then whoever they put across from Rhea Ripley. That could be five times. Whoever they put across from Rhea Ripley. It could be Nia Jax. It could be Becky Lynch. It could be Bailey. It could be, dude. Mm. Epic. 
I agree. I agree. I will say that I was a little shocked, though, mm -hmm. especially after we know what happened at SummerSlam with mm -hmm. the crowd going absolutely bananas for LA Knight. Um, mm -hmm. I was a little surprised he wasn't on that team at Survivor Series uh, in War Games. You know, mm -hmm. I think, and I hate to say this, I think sometimes WWE, there's ebbs and flows. They'll let you go way up there, they'll cool you off just a little bit, and then mm -hmm. test you again to see if you get back up there. And I think mm -hmm. that's kind of what they did with LA Knight. I also would have thought at this pay-per-view, he would have been going against Logan Paul for the U.S. Mm -hmm. title. Yeah, maybe he will at Mania, or like you said, if he wins the title, we'll see. But I think you got to give that man a good payoff somewhere between mm -hmm. now and WrestleMania. Yeah. Now, going back to the original question, me personally, I definitely think Roman will come out with it again. Mm -hmm. If we look at historically these uh fatal four way matches, people mm -hmm. always tell a story, and it, I mean, it's good, you got to prop it up like that, that the champion doesn't have to lose. But if you actually look at them historically, how often does the champion lose in those fatal four ways? He Not always really. seems to come out with the title, true or false. And Ooh. we got, like I said, Rock, Rock was just on ESPN with Stephen A. Smith, mm -hmm. and Rock has already been calling it out. He wants to be in the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. Mm -hmm. Some people are trying to say he might push it out to next year. I know they did that with Rock and Cena, but I hate to put it like this. I don't care how physically fit the Rock is muscular. Mm -hmm. He looks amazing still. Being yeah. in that wrestling ring is different. And yeah. I know, you know, in my former wrestling days, there's certain things I noticed and saw. When he was in there with Hold on, Will. Hold on. Not just saying your former wrestling days as being ranked one of PWI's 500 best in the world days. Okay? Number 420. Number 420. Let's, this is true. Let, let's call it. Let's call it what it is now. He was one of the best. But Jinder Mahal, even in that little interaction with Jinder Mahal, I don't know if you noticed, after Rock hit him with that spine buster in the people's elbow, Rock was breathing a little bit. I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah. Because wrestling, I'm telling you, I don't. if you've ever been in the ring out there listening to this, it is a whole different ball game. It mm -hmm. is. And <clears throat> people talking about, well, maybe he'll wait till next year. Well, now you're talking about a 51-year-old people's champ. And with the and I'm not knocking age. It's not no age shaming. Well, we know also with Hollywood, they're not going to want to keep letting that man go. You know what I mean? He already got his hands in the UFL. He's still trying to act. He's got his hands now in the the TKO holdings. That is mm -hmm. a lot. And Hollywood still wants him. Of and not, let's not even talk about his liquors and his clothing and all that other stuff he got going on. I think if you're gonna pull that trigger, you got a roughly two and a half months. You do it now. And I've been saying for the last six months or more, now that he's done with DC, after what happened with Black Adam, man, we would be, with him, with him being the, the biggest box office star in the world, you would be a fool to think that Disney ain't throwing offers his way. Yeah. And you would be a fool to think that he ain't considering. And there is somebody, I don't know what character, it don't even matter, but there is somebody in that Marvel Universe, they want The Rock to play. Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure he wanted to. Absolutely, man, because, you know, I, he, he will say it himself. I am not speaking out of turn. He can make probably more money in a movie and save his body a lot more than get in that ring. You heard yeah. the story last time, and you talk about five years or so ago when he went against Cena. What did he mm -hmm. say happened to him? Do you remember? He hurt his ribs. Mm -hmm. They had to put the movie on hold so all the people couldn't get paid. All them Screen Actors Guild and, and then WAG, WAG people didn't get paid for six weeks because of his injury. That he took because he took a match in the middle of filming. Listen, mm -hmm. Hollywood does not play. I'm not saying there's an Illuminati, but as we know, there is there's very <laughs> strong powers in Hollywood, and they do not very play. Strong. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm gonna go back to the original point. I definitely think. Roman wins at the Royal Rumble because we need him to go on to Mania. Mm -hmm. But that's the world title match. Right. now. So I assume now we don't have a match with Seth at the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's possible. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate because, man, I was ready. I was ready for a good Seth match. Yeah. You know, he was talking some cash stuff, boy. <laughs> but with that being said, I want to slide into the Women's Royal Rumble right now. Okay. The Women's Royal Rumble over time has... Seem in the last couple of years, seems like it had more surprises than the men's Royal Rumble Way as far more. as special guests. If you notice, 
Mm-hmm. And with that being said, mm-hmm. is it time for it, man? Is it time for you know who? You the baddest chick in the world, man. The real baddest chick in the world. That bitch, Jay Cargill. <laughs> is it time, man? It's time. Glad you called. It's time. time for it. No time. No more waiting. It's- it's time. Um, when she shows up, whether it's in the Royal Rumble or or thereafter, and I just feel like this is the right time. The, the Royal Rumble is the perfect place for her to debut. Um, she's gonna come out and it's gonna be a spectacle. It ain't just gonna be five, four, three, two, one, and music hitting her her walk out. Dude, she gonna have entrance. It's gonna be like SummerSlam WrestleMania level. She gonna come out, it's gonna be a spectacle. I agree. Like, <laughs> I agree. And she gonna jump in that ring and just start. <laughs> Especially with the girl Charlotte going right now. Who else has that statuesque look that your eyes are automatically drawn drawn to her besides someone like Jay? Dude, How- she got the support and she got the support of Charlotte. Yeah. Come on, man. Charlotte now- in her corner. Charlotte, Charlotte, one of the people singing up praises like Jade is gonna be a megastar. And another another thing I noticed, one thing about WWE, we can say a lot of times they do stuff that everybody notices. But since Triple H been in charge, he's been throwing a lot of swerves in the game. Now we sitting here, we listen to Rhea say that she wants Becky Lynch. We hear Nia Jax say she wants uh, Rhea. So it makes it seem like, okay, those two are going to be the winners. Mm -hmm. Why not throw Jade in there to throw you all off? I mean, do you imagine (laughs) nobody can throw, let's be honest, every Royal Rumble, Every huge person they have takes what? Multiple people to throw them out the ring, right? Mm-hmm. So nobody's just throwing Nia Jax out the ring. Nope. Imagine Nia going crazy, throwing out three, four, five ladies. Jay music hits. Jay comes out there with this huge, like you said, entrance. She looks Nia dead in the face. Nia does that little smile. She does that little smirk. Swings on her. Jay blocks it. Pow, pow. Lifts that girl up and throws her out by herself. The crowd goes crazy. The oh, announcers crazy. go crazy. The other wrestlers in the ring can just stop and look. And, and she ain't going to just throw She's not just going to grab her and throw her out right away. Naya going to go for that big clothesline. Jay going to duck it. And who big enough other than, I don't even know if Rhea got that agility like that. Man, she going to do that pump kick right in the face. Woo! And do you, and you like know she said, get up, too. She get up. Ooh. Now, you, you do that. Now you got re you you know, and even after that, let's just say Jay does that. Now you got Becky Lynch salivating. Oh shoot, what just happened? Mm-hmm. Now you see them go at it for a little bit, but then we can't forget my sister Bianca Belair finally gets in there, and now mm-hmm. she goes eye to eye with Jade. And you know what they like to do? That you look at the crowd that way. I look at the crowd that way. And they both point at the WrestleMania sign. Come on, man. That is mm-hmm. money to be made. Money. <laughs> so even right there, let's, let's just say, you know, I, you know, I'm picking, I'm, I think I'm going to go with Jay too. But let's say Jay takes the L. Let's say it's because of Bianca Belair. Now, you got your WrestleMania match right there from that yeah. moment from Royal Rumble. Yep. That's what I'm I, saying, man. At Mania, that would be a whole that would be a Hogan Rock moment, man. Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill stand across the ring from each other, looking at each other, and the crowd just going, "Wow, it's going crazy." And one thing I like about you got them over here chanting E S T, yes, E S T, and then you got them over here chanting whatever they're gonna chant for Jay. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll keep it PG, <laughs> right for WWE. <laughs> but you know what's crazy, man, and that's one thing I like about this season right now. And I think every quote-unquote, I hate to use the term, wrestling journalist has been trying to admit this. It has never been so hard to make a decision on what's it really going to be this year. Normally, we can kind of tell where they're going. It is so many different choices. It's like one of them old, uh, what was the Mad Libs or whatever, the little book where you could like go to page three or go to page six to finish it off. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? It was yeah. like that, man. I've never seen that many. I mean, but even when I was back at the Scrum, a Survivor Series, that's what mm-hmm. I told Cody. I said, Cody, dog, y'all are the Avengers, man. There's so many people over. You know, they had to cool off Jay also because he was up there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have, and we we still haven't had the Jay and Jimmy uh, interaction. I, that'll probably happen in the Royal Rumble. You know man, what I'm saying? The second right. day match, and we haven't right. even, they haven't even started that yet. But yeah, so right. going back to what I said, the women's match. 
I definitely think Jade is going to come out. And I think, I don't even want to pick because I'm so confused. But I think it's going to be, something's going to happen with her and Bianca. But I do not think it's going to be Becky that wins the Rumble this year. I don't either. I, I don't, don't even want don't, to be back. I think I think she's had her shine. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't think it's her. I don't think it's going to be her. I mean, I I mean, I'm, I really feel like in my gut, you know, other than some fantasy stuff, I feel like it's Nia Jax's time. While they've, she hasn't been that, like, truly dominant force since she was in NXT. When she was running with Eva Marie and they was throwing mugs through walls and all that stuff. She ain't been that dominant for us yeah. really since she got on the main roster. There's been glimpses here and there. But overall, I mean, they let, you know, the wrestlers small and her kind of punk her. Yeah, like, I come agree. on, man. And like I, she I, said herself on the microphone before they, they released her. I'm a 300-pound Samoan woman. Y'all can't can y'all do with me. The one thing I don't like that they do that she do, and I don't know if it's her and she doesn't notice it. Well, first of all, do you see a lot of her uh, social media? She does a lot of dance and all that, which I get having fun backstage. But I think Nia is just generally a good person. You know, I, like me. The problem with that is I think sometimes she takes it to the ring where even though she's that monster, she does that little smile a little too much. That little, You know what I mean? It's different to have that evil smirk, like I'm going to kill you, to being so happy because you're walking around with Alexa Bliss. You get what I'm saying? That's the only thing I would like to her to change. And then, it was that other tall girl they had, Raquel, whatever her name was. Rodriguez. Yeah, she was kind of doing the same thing. And she was a monster. You know, she was smiling I, way too much. You, so you peeped it too. I know you're happy to be in there. You it actually to annoyed me when they brought her yes. up and she was doing all that grinning. I'm like, when she was in NXT, Big Mommy Cool, she wasn't doing all that smiling. Oh, she wasn't doing it then? No. No, dude, she was rough and tough. Dude, she wasn't doing all that grinning. Yeah, that's the only thing about it, man. I, you know, whew. Well, with that being said, we talking about it. I want Cody to come out and stop smiling so much too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, they talk about that on the radio all the time too. Like, I don't Cody, you talk you talked about you want to finish your story. You got your head cracked by the tribal chief last year. You had to take your, your, your chest was poor was purple. You mm-hmm. went through the trauma. Why are you still so happy? Not saying you got to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. But just how you got upset with CM Punk the other day, give me that energy more often. I'm going to be honest. I don't really like that whole. So, Kansas City, what do you want to talk about? No. You know what you want to talk about. You know Mm -hmm. what the issue is. Every time you come out to that ring, they give you that live mic. Mm -hmm. I don't don't know where they got that from. I'm not a fan of that. But, you know. Cause he, cause he would say it in interviews and stuff, and that just kind of, you know, it be, kind of became his thing. But and, you, I mean, he really should flip it. He should just come out and be like, "Here's what I want to talk." Yes, but or just you know, dodge the whole, is. dodge the catchphrase all together. You don't need, you don't need one. And I know what it is. They want to sell all these, you know, they sell the merch to the kids and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. we're at Survivor City. We see little babies dressed up like him. He gives, and I get all that. But in the in the end, and I know. People always say wrestling is what they say about it, but it is still conceptually two men fighting. Whether they're simulating fighting or not, there are two men fighting. That's what it is. Yeah. With that being said, ain't no grown man out there smiling like that when he about to whoop up somebody that just kicked his tail last week. Mm. Nope. <laughs> you know, and so I will, you know, you want to be the champ, you want to be all this, that, a third, you got to go hard. I would love, and if Cody, if you ever hear this, Stop smiling. Maybe, hey, if you win your match, smile then. Smile after smile the match. Smile then. Yep. <laughs> Not going down, you know, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Whoa! You, you can do your song, but you don't have to smile all the time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was, And I know we're going off track a little bit, but even like, what did Rhea tell Finn Balor the other day? Let me get that vicious Finn. Yeah. That one is like, that's what we want. Give us a little bit of that. That one was whooping on Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, guys, we were just talking about uh, Nia Jax and Najee is internet because he's down in Tampa and the hotel internet is acting crazy. So he jumped off, but he's got a dope interview. We're going to drop all the interviews later this week once he gets to a stable internet line. Now, we talked about the women's and I can't. I can't wait to mess with them pictures he took, too. I'm like, oh, every, every picture I looked at, I got a story idea. I'm like, 
I'm, I'm doing something with all of these. Oh, man. <laughs> Each one what, of these. Did you see the little dance he did with Tazawa? The little I said, yeah, this is gonna be fun, man. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I we got I want to get them all so we can just talk about that. Like really just talk about that one day too. Yeah. But anyway, with that being said, now it's time to talk about the men's Royal Rumble. Man. You man. know what it is now. All the implications are there. It is going to be a game changer. Mm. Tomorrow is gonna be why people spend hundreds and thousands of dollars in Philadelphia in April. Whatever mm-hmm. happens tomorrow. Right. What is your call? 30 men, and I know it's tough. And I threw it straight at you already. Threw that fastball down the plate. What You wouldn't even got to pick a winner just yet. But how do, how do you see the Royal Rumble formulating? I'm going to I'm gonna pick a winner. Ooh. I see it formulating. Um, we got to they got to pull from some of the best ones they've ever had. Um, that third one, Stone Cold one, that's considered a classic. 92, Ric Flair walking out the title. That's considered a classic. The You know, it's the anniversary of Hulkamania, so you got to look at the Hulk Hogan ones, you know. Um, and then, you know, last year, and the one, Cena and Batista one. Uh, the scene of Batista fell, you know, fell out at the same time. Batista ended up winning. Like uh, uh, some of those were good run. Um, so I'm looking for more of that. I'm looking forward to come down to two guys who can go. So you get that moment like Sean and Undertaker. So you get that moment like Cody and Gunther. That's something that you want to see continue. Like Edge and Rey Mysterio. You know what I mean? Like those, those moments in a multi-person match where it come down to those last two people and you get that match after the match, so to speak. Like I want to want to see that. And and if we being honest, those two people are Cody and CM Punk. Could it become a WrestleMania match? Sure it could. Will it? We won't know until we know. But could they give it to us without giving it to us? Yes. And they could do it right then. The last two people in the Royal Rumble. And they just going at it. Going at it like a main event match, they just going at it. And then um I gotta go with my original pick, man, which even before he got there. CM Punk. Ooh. Okay, okay. So CM you don't Punk. think it's gonna be the Hawks? I Hulkster, just always man? felt like he was gonna I'm like either he either he's gonna show up at one of these pay-per-views or he's gonna be a surprise entrance at the Royal Rumble man, after he left AEW. I'm like, perfect opportunity. So you don't think it's going to be the Hawkster? He did give a tease this past Monday. Hawk said he might have one left in him. The red and yellow. To win it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know what? I hadn't thought about that until right now. And if we're going by tradition, then the main event of night two should be a triple threat. Like, can you imagine The Rock, Hogan, and Roman? <laughs> so you try to say it's serious, then you bust out laughing. He tried to hold <laughs> No, man, I'm just he imagining it. like... It would it would tick people off and excite people at the same time. Oh, can you part. imagine? Can you imagine though? Just from a marketing standpoint, you're talking generational. Hogan, Rock, Roman. And you know, as wild as that sounds, if you remember, who people thought they was done with Hogan when he went against the Rock back in the day. And what happened? The crowd turned to and you, it, it sounds crazy, man, but I don't know. <laughs> But with that being said, I'm going to make a pick, too. And I actually think, and this is what's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings long term. Yes. Especially Dale LaGreca. Shout out to him. Mm. I think Cody is going to win the Rumble. Again, I think Cody's going to win the Rumble. Okay. I think Cody, somehow, it turns out that match with him and CM Punk, because I do think they're going to go against each other at WrestleMania, is going to be for a title, because I don't think Seth is coming back in time. Mm. I think somehow... They work it where Cody gets to go against CM Punk for that World Heavyweight Championship. Because mm. I just don't see CM. I just don't see Seth coming back. I know he wants to, but I, I just don't see it. I don't see him making it back before WrestleMania. Okay. Yeah. So mm. I, I, that's my pick, y'all. To let us know who you think your picks are in the comments, we want to know. But I, I, again, I know it's a hard pick. I know it's a hard pick, man. Yeah. But with that being said, before we get out of here. Yes. Surprises. There's mm-hmm. a lot of names out there. 
WWE released a lot of people here recently. And we know that the Forbidden Door, people forget. It can still be open even in WWE because we had Mickey James come out of the Women's World Rumble. She was the Impact, uh, well, now TNA, but back then, Impact Knockouts Champion. Yeah. Is there any surprises you think are going to happen or that you would like to happen? I can name a whole bunch of them. Um, Sasha Banks or Mercedes Monet, uh, Okada, MJF. Like we can throw a whole lot of names around. Ooh. But you know what? After after listening to a couple interviews after Hard to Kill, you know, it would it wouldn't surprise me, but it would be very cool if one of the surprise entrances was Moose. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If it was Moose coming out there with the Impact World title. And I don't know if people know, but Endeavor does have a, a stake now in TNA wrestling. And as we know, Endeavor has a stake in WWE. Matter of fact, TNA is even calling their pay-per-views now premium live My events. Goodness. I'm just saying, you never know. Because I was thinking, like, what if we just saw Dolph, or excuse me, Nick Nemeth mm -hmm. in TNA? And we think he's totally gone. And out of nowhere, we hear him come out the Royal Rumble. And then you're really confused about what's going on in the world of pro wrestling. And we know we got Okada out there. I think Okada, that might be a big interest for him, man. I would like that as well. But so much out there, man. But I'm going to put this out there, and I'm going to make a clip of this. Mm. And I'm going to just put it out there in the end. I'm going to just say it. I'm going to say it. Y'all can trash me if you want to. MJF oh. is going to be at the Royal Rumble. Mm. I know nobody I wants like to believe it. it. But I'm calling it. I'm calling it, and that's it. That's all I got to say. I believe it. I believe it. I, I think that... I'm about to say, like, I know you said you got to go in two minutes. I'm like, two minutes for real? Y'all in there. Here we <laughs> with go. That... <laughs> but with that being said, y'all, for real, we want y'all to enjoy the Royal Rumble. It's all When we do have these conversations, we just want people to have fun. That's all about mm -hmm. bringing fun back to pro wrestling and just talking about it, discussing it because there's too many people, like you said earlier, want to do spoilers and try to hate on it and cause the fans not to have fun. It's all about talking about it, enjoying it, whatever you guys want to do. With that mm -hmm. being said, Joe, let them know where they can get a hold of you, dog. Yeah, I'm like, uh, you'll find me on this ENT.com. That's T H I S E N T.com. Make sure you're checking out this podcast. Make sure you're checking out everything that we do on the whip podcast i know whip you're gonna plug it but i gotta save my piece too guys i want y'all to really understand what's happening here with the whip show you're talking about an expansion you're talking about i mean we had naji down there at royal rumble right now you saw what you've been seeing what whip has been doing he's one of the fastest rising media personalities in all of professional wrestling and that's not by attrition i mean this is the plan is in motion. I'm happy to be a part of it. Follow me on social media at Mr. Joe Walker everywhere. But um, the whip show is where it's at. Not me. Whip show. Well, I appreciate that, man. And like he said, check out this ENT.com. I told you earlier, just an amazing author. Always dropping gems. Amazing articles, man. And like he said, trust me, the whip show podcast, we don't like to toot our own horn. But the horn is a... <laughs> Two, 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 two. <laughs> By the end of 2024, it's going to be a big expansion. So we really want you guys to jump onto it. I don't believe in the concept bandwagon because we all together, man. We all wrestling fans. This was all about. So you know what to do. Like it, share it, tag your friends, um, tweet about it. And we're going to be back next week because we got to talk about what happened at the Royal Rumble, right? Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll be back next week. We'll See y'all later. Right here, the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders Podcast, a.k.a. The Whip okay. Show. Take care, guys. I give that a thumbs up. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>